Well, good morning to our live audience. I got that part right. It is still, um, well, you know, and I screw that up every time, Jen, because it's not actually, um, we might have a live audience on the East Coast and it's afternoon there. So uh, I, I'm never going to get that right. But it is morning here in Denver, Colorado. Don't let the uh, palm tree behind me fool you. Uh, I am not uh, sitting on a beach in Florida. Um, but welcome to a, another episode of How I Met Your Mortgage, our weekly uh, video cast and podcast. I'm Adam Smith, your host with Just the Tips Coaching. With me, as always, is our uh, marketing director and one of our other coaches, Jen Weyboer. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. Mindy just did say there's a video issue, but she doesn't think our video is working there, right now. There's a video issue and our video isn't working? Uh-oh. Yeah, before we dive into this. Oh, Hmm. Oh, it just popped up. Ah, there is a bit of a delay, so uh, maybe that's the issue. It's not really live for those of you that think it's live. There's a bit of a delay, but Mindy, thank you for the (laughs) heads up. We certainly appreciate that. And our guest this week, a repeat guest and somebody that we have uh, grown very close to and very fond of, Antoine Glover. Good morning, Antoine. Good morning. Thank you for taking that restraining order away. I feel uh, I feel free now that I, you know, I, you know, I can actually go within a thousand feet to, to both you and uh, and Jim. Well, you behaved sure. yourself for six months, so we figured that we'd give that another try. Um, a little bit of background: Antoine is a repeat guest and is a real estate agent, not in our market, but certainly here in Colorado. He focuses on the Colorado Springs area. Um, And of course, we've uh, pinged some clients back and forth that are even doing crazy things like living in Florence of all places, right there with uh, El Chapo and uh, some uh, Kaczynski, some other famous Florence, Colorado residents. Um, But Antoine has also been a a speaker at our Mastermind event, has been on the show before, was a news anchor himself at one time. So the video and audio glitches are nothing new to him. Uh, Right. We uh, we roll with the punches. We uh, uh, make it as it comes. You know, it's funny that we uh, bring that subject up and I'll be brief about this. Um, Do you guys remember when that dog that had no business being in a news studio the day after uh, in a freezing pond of water attacked Kyle Dyer on camera? No. Yeah, it's it's Uh, been a number of years, and Kyle was a morning anchor at Nine News at the time, and they had interviewed this dog and its owner that was, uh, he was trapped in a frozen pond wintertime. And, of course, the dog was probably still in shock, should not have been in the news studio under all the lights, etc. the next day. But, yeah, he bit her face. Um, And... Uh, she looks great. The uh, surgery, uh, her recovery was amazing. But the way that, oh my goodness, I mean, it was that bad. It was oh, it was that bad. Yeah. Um, but the wow. way that the crew at Nine News handled it immediately following was so professional. It was just mind blowing. You'll have to go find some uh, YouTube clips of that because they really, really did a good job of rolling with the punches when there are audio and video issues um so that's wow. crazy. heavy heavy sidebar there so you guys watching or listening can ignore me on that particular subject um and yeah let's get down to brass tacks uh the first thing jen and i wanted to do was harass you about missing our quarterly round table last week right mm-hmm. right right um mm-hmm. that was a fantastic event um a great group of people we talked about everybody's favorite business book and obviously we've picked your brain about that a bunch we talked about that at the mastermind event you gave us some insight as to what's uh, sitting on your nightstand what's on your to read list what's on your recently read list and what's on your all-time favorites that i would read it again list um and at the round table everybody brought a book not Uh, actually brought the book but brought the title of a book and it was funny because I think of the 10 of us or the 10 books that surfaced all 10 of us had already read all 10 books Um, so (laughs) you kind of get a feel for what really top producing people are doing when it comes to good reading material good content things that we can learn from others 
which of course is what brings us here today, what brings us to the mastermind. We want for our audience to be able to learn from our guests. And Antoine, you have no shortage of good information, good content for people that are in a sales gig, other real estate agents, loan originators, financial planners, insurance agents, so on and so forth, where we work directly with the consumer on things that are you know, life altering type of stuff for them, whether it's their new home or their life insurance, whatever the case may be. So um, why don't you give us some insight? I know you've been uh, formulating some ideas about what you want to bring to the table today. Well, yeah, I actually have. And, and once again, I apologize for not being the, the quarterly c- connection. Um, I've been doing, uh, I'm, I'm getting younger. I, I'm, I was 45 about a week ago. I'm 26 now. Wow. And I, yeah. I'm and, younger uh, than me. That's yeah, there, there it is. That is how I'm doing it. This is how I roll. Okay. But no, all kidding aside, I'm just really starting to take care of my body. And I was doing an NAD plus infusion. Won't get into it, but uh, those that are listening, they're interested, just Google NAD plus. And uh, like I was talking to you guys uh, off camera, uh, feel like a million bucks, feel like I've never, I've never felt this energized, but yet calm ever in my life. And I know it's an oxymoron, especially coming from me, Mr. Excitement here. <laughs> um, but yeah, but hey, speaking of which, this is the book that I have, um, I've, I've delved, I dived into the audio book, listened to it about four or five times. And I just received the book. Um, if you haven't got it, um, it's, it is mind blowing on this, uh, this Napoleon Hill outwitting the devil written in 1938. And it's such a trip to, to read old school material that is prevalent to today. It's wow. a, it's, it really is uh, mind blowing. And the gist of it is he um, interviews the devil and it's not creepy. And I know we're just past Halloween, but it's not creepy like that, but it's really getting inside um, of that negativity that stops us, what prevents us. And it's nothing that's so direct. It's these slow, ever so slowly drifts that before you know it, you wake up and you go, how did I get here? What is going on? So it's a, it's a very, um, it's a very appropriate book for any time, but especially, uh, especially the time that we're facing now. Well, and so, we've all become accustomed to getting great content from Napoleon Hill. Um, you know, there right. are, uh, books out there that are obviously, you know, tip top bestsellers. I would say everybody that's ever been in business and certainly anybody that's ever owned their own business has read something from Napoleon Hill. So that should be a nice addition to anybody's library. Right, right. I, I, I highly recommend if, hey, I highly recommend people just go out there and, and just read in general. You don't have to read a tome uh, to, to, to really grasp as to what uh, great information is out there. I just tell people, keep it simple. You know, if you have time to watch this, if you have time to go on Facebook, you do have time to read one chapter of a good book a day that equivalent uh, it's equivalent to 12 to 15 books a year. Anybody can do that. It's about 10 to 15 minutes a day. All right, let, let's do this yeah. because I, I know I want to discuss this with you. There is a great opportunity to find some time to read by ditching the television. What I know, no. and and you you brought this up at the Mastermind event, and we right. uh, bantered about it a little bit, um, and it wasn't so much focused specifically on the television. And there are exceptions that are great releases. Right. There's great film. There's great uh, fictional television. There are sporting events, but we really focused on the news. And one of the jokes that we told while we were off camera this morning was that it's an election week, and your reaction was. It is. Now we know that was tongue in cheek, but if you really are somebody that has taken your positivity level to a new level with the intent and practice of eliminating the news. And I'm, uh, for those of you in the news media, you know, if you catch wind of this, we're sympathetic. They want to sell their shit just like the rest of us do. And this is how they do it. Uh, fear and negativity. Um, and, you know, we're going to talk about um, mudslinging, we're going to talk about riots, and we're going to talk about boarding up businesses and whatever other crap is coming out this week because of where we're at in the <clears throat> election cycle. Um, but you take this to heart, Antoine. You're really big on keeping your attitude as great as it is, and it is, by eliminating that kind of negativity from your life. 
Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's really no different if I told you I had, well, I guess we can use it now, but I was going to say if I had the flu and I was coming over for dinner, you'd say, well, hey, you know, why don't you come when you're feeling better? Or if I said I had, you know, a little touch of the COVID, you're like, oh, yeah, hey, you know, you know <laughs> why don't you just chill at home for a little bit and let us know? Why would you do? Why would you say that? It's a rhetorical question because you know that's not a positive, healthy um, interaction between each other, and that's the same way that I that I take with my mind. You know, I, bringing back um, when I talked in the uh, the the, uh, the um, in the I was going to say the mastermind, but yeah, there was a mastermind that we were at, yep. and, and 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 Earl Nightingale was what I brought up, and and he said something in the strangest secret that really scared the bejesus out of me. And it really holds true. Your mind doesn't care what you feed it. It just grows what you feed it. And so just think about this, you know, death, destruction, you got fear, anger, and sadness to start your day. No one wakes up. No one wakes up and says, well, I hope I have a shitty day today. (laughs) Not one person. Every time we are allowed to wake up, we wake up and say, man, I hope today is a good day. I want to have a good day. Then you turn on the news and you get fear, anger, and sadness. Then your reticular alert system is kicking in. And then what are you looking for? Racism, riots, police are bad. This is bad. And I'm going to get the virus. No. And And you've got all these things going on in your head in addition to normal life. How are you anticipating to have a good day when you start off with crap in your brain. And that goes to the point of what Earl Nightingale, and that's all these great ones that I'm talking to you guys about, is and even the good book, if you will, uh, the Bible. And I'm not afraid to say that. Um, but, but they all really say the same thing. What you feed your mind, your mind will only grow it. And if you really start thinking about that, geez Louise, I mean, you can really scare yourself into a corner, scare yourself into a basement, scare yourself silly to where you take no action. And that is key, right? To anything that we do in life. It, yeah, you can read all the books that you want, but if we don't take the proper action that's followed by the information, it's all for naught. And if you're afraid to take the step, take the leap, start a new business, get into real estate, although it's a great time, but what if it busts? What if it doesn't? What if it continues to grow even better? How about when people were doing well during a crappy time? How did they do it? Why did you talk to somebody? Change the way that you think and the things that you think about will change. Well, and there's not really, I just want to, you know, sidebar that there isn't really a bust if you're a real estate agent. Does the real estate market shift to where it's going to favor buyers instead of sellers? Yep. Probably, eventually, absolutely. Um, It's cyclical. It always has been. So if you're a dynamic real estate agent and you're still not out there trying to figure out how to do short sales and REOs, then you, you change with the times. You morph with what's, you know, productive and positive in the business. And you can be successful no matter what's going on in the market. You, you really can. You know, I always look at, uh, at real estate and when people, and we've talked about this too in our last interview, when people ask me, so where do you get all your leads and all this? And I go, there's a hundred percent of people, all of them, no matter where you live in the world, they all need shelter. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, it sounds so simplistic, but it truly really is. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're always going to need an expert to find you a home. You're going to need money you know, I always say, even if you have more than enough money, why use your own? Use somebody else's. Go to go to Adam, or right? And, and there's always somebody there that you're going to need, and they're going to need your expertise. So always be there. Don't worry about going out and selling real estate. Are you looking to buy or sell real estate? Come and look at me. You know, you don't have that. <laughs> well, I but I called because of your bus bench. <laughs> right. <laughs> Versus go to the barbecue, have fun. Don't be the weirdo. Go out there and and go out and meet a crap load of sincerely, congrat, a crap load of friends. Because you they may not need your service, but they could be a, a chiropractor, a dentist, um, a landscaper that a client of yours or a friend of yours may hurt their back. Say, hey, go to my guy. Hey, my guy Antoine, he told me to come over to you. Who do you think they're going to think about when they're selling their home and their daughter's getting married, when they just became uh, pregnant, regardless, 
go out there and make friends. And I know we've heard this, you know, go out there and just make great relationships. But what is your intent behind the relationship is the key point as to what makes it so simple. The friends that you have now, you didn't go up to them and said, hey, I don't have a friend. You want to be my friend? No, you'd be freaking weird. Right. But the friends that you that, have, that's how you got the restraining order in the first place. That's how I got them. I'm like, Adam, <laughs> I know you don't know me, but, um, but that's how you really start developing that clientele. And, and it's interesting what we do for a living. We see the fruits of our labor on the back end versus a lot of, a lot of people are used to that W2 mindset or it's like, okay, I put in 30% of my effort because I just have to work just as hard just to not get fired and just do what I got to do to get paid. And this mindset of being in sales of any sort, it's different, but the reward is that much greater. True story. There are a couple of things I want to uh, expand on from what Antoine said there for those of you that are listening uh, or watching, I guess, if you're uh, catching us live. Um, one is that if you're in real estate, mortgages certainly uh, tail into that. Um, every single person you know either owns a home, wants to own a home, or knows someone who does. That's it. Right. Every single person you meet could either be a client, a leader, an advocate. Bottom line, without equivocation. The more important piece of this, what Antoine's referring to when he's talking about the chiropractor, and uh, I think we actually use an auto mechanic as the example, um, we, we refer to it as net weaving. And obviously, we all know what networking is. You know, we network, we meet people, we do that activity in the interest of finding business, of finding the deal, of finding the sale. And if you take the mindset, and this is not anything new, this is obviously something that's been being, oh, it's been preached since, you know, I saw Zig as a, Zig Ziglar as a kid. We're net weaving. So we're going through that activity, using that mindset to actually try to find other people business so now i'm at that party and i actually am kind of seeking out the guy with the bad back to refer over to my chiropractor right. because then the tenfold dividends pay and yes now i solved his back problem i got my chiropractor another client those people are never going to think of anybody else when it does come to real estate when they're ready to buy or sell. So yeah, right. that's, a, that's a concept that we refer to in our coaching program as net weaving instead of networking, where you basically participate in the same activities you would when you're networking, but with the intent of finding somebody else a piece of business, not yourself. Right, and it's kind of funny coming from Mr. Positive, I need to find something negative to fix. What do I mean by that? I need to find a problem. That's all I do for a living. That's all you do for a living. That's all we all do in sales. I need, you're coming into the car dealership because there's a pain point. There's a reason why you're in there. You're not in there because you love your vehicle. It's the best vehicle ever. Or right? you keep it, right. Right, or you would keep it. You wouldn't be in there. There is a reason. I need, you. Just, just to your point, I need to figure out your back pain. I need to figure out your tooth pain. Here's another thing that it, it took me a while to get because I was so excited to be in real estate. And if you're looking to buy or sell and oh my God, and everybody's like, dude, <laughs> shut up. Here, and I was the, offering, restraining order. My restraining order. But here, here it is. So many times we're offering a problem for a toothache when I'm complaining about a backache. Hmm. Mm -hmm. you're thinking more about yourself and what me, 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 and what I can do. And I'm the best and me, me, me. When I'm saying, dude, I don't need a dentist. I need a chiropractor. Why are you giving me something I don't need? Oh, I that's, think there's a lot of that in sales. Yeah, right. I, I think we, Absolutely. Yeah, we focus on the sale rather than solving the pain. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So that's, I mean, it's, it's so simple. And I hate to sound so simplistic, but it's not an easy, it's not an easy concept to really grasp because we are so focused, especially when you get into any kind of sales is uh, it's always about me and I get it. I need, I need a commission. I need to pay my bills. I need a car payment. I, 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 and as soon as going back to Zig Ziglar, start thinking about them, right? What is this old line, man? This is how I live is is, you know, all I got to do is help enough people get what they want and I'm taking care of. Yeah. And you see how easy that sounds? It's more challenging because you have to give it time and you have to, there's an art to everything. There really is. And in, in, in the right questions, when to ask the right questions, 
And the key, the key that so many people drop is they don't shut their mouths and listen. Oh, that's a tough one for salespeople. We love to talk. We suck at listening. What was that? We, we no, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get you, man. Yeah, that's, was, and we talk about the, the some of the most important skills by far that a salesperson can have. Listening, way at the top of the list. Reading, way at the top of the list. Um, I mean, to take in what other people are giving you to I, let them identify the pain points for you to solve, that kind of thing, it's enormous. But as salespeople, we struggle um, to be good listeners. We're good talkers. We're very good talkers. But uh, that is a skill that, you, as a salesperson, your ability to listen, to really hear, and to read the subtext, to know what people are saying between the lines, are some of the skills that you should be developing from day one all the way through the end of your career. Right. Oh, and right. that's I the other thing you said, is that a lot of people are treating this as a job. And not a career. It does take time. It's a marathon, right. not a sprint. It it, to it totally is. I mean, you can go, you can go balls to the wall and, and do everything that everybody has told you. And you go, well, geez, it's been like six weeks. Keep going. I know, <laughs> but it's been like six months and I still don't have anything. Keep going. Keep going. And there's a there's a book that um, that actually uh, Sharon Letcher. She's the one that that um, that kind of helped narrate this book, Outwitting the Devil. But it's called Three Feet uh, Three Feet from Gold. And, and that's the gist of it. So many of us, same thing with Acres of Diamonds. It's, it's you're so close when you were right about to give up and about 95% of the people when they just say, this isn't for me, I had it. And you were three feet from gold. gold. Years yeah. ago, uh, the night before a speaking engagement at the Mortgage Revolution Conference, I had a student that was going to be in the audience ask me, uh, what's the one thing you would tell somebody to do to get where you're at? And I said, work hard for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> there's no unicorns. There's no magic potions. There's no secrets. Right. Yeah, just if you work hard for 20 years, then the, this will pan out for you too. Yeah. Right. I mean, hey, Jen, I just want to even, you know, kind of bring you into in this discussion here. I mean, do you find a lot of people too um, that you're finding that it, they, they have this microwave to success mentality? Oh, Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, my background's in direct sales, and I talk about this all the time with our clients, that it's very similar. They think they're going to get rich quick. They don't realize that how much work it is. Um, and one of my favorite things it came from direct sales coaching was that it's all simple tasks, but it's not easy. And people go into sales careers thinking they'll be easy. Simple. It's form relationship, solve problems, and people overcomplicate it, and they don't want to put in the work. And right. Slow and low. It's crock pot. Well, it, and it what really are some is. of the big things you hear people say about why they got into real estate? Uh, I'm going to make a lot of money. My schedule is going to be flexible. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to spend more time with my kid. You know, and of course, your first couple of years in real estate are not going to be any different than your first couple of years of any other entrepreneurial type of idea, any workload. Yeah, you better realize that this is, you know, 60 hours a week, seven days a week, eyes open, eyes closed kind of thing for potentially years to develop the kind of success that we see from, you know, the legit top producers, people doing dozens and dozens of deals a year, people that have agents under them, assistants under them, TCs under them, on and on. That's your first few years are going to be a lot of hard work. Right. But, 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 you know, when you put it everything in perspective, and I try to help people get out of that W2 mindset is it's either you, you're going to pay the price up front or slowly over the last, the last 30 years. And you're going to wake up 60, 65, 70 going, what the hell did I do? Why didn't I take advantage of the opportunities? I mean, you just do, do the, you know, his, throughout history. I mean, you look at people that did very well that saw opportunities during the depression. And when you see so many people that are looking and like, I don't know what's going to go on. I don't know who's going to be president. Don't cloud your mind with that. Focus in on your client, one client at a time. Focus in on that one person who might be your client, one lunch at a time, one coffee at a time. Give them a call. I'll give you an example. I still, to this day, it's been almost 10 years. No, it's been eight years now. And he thought I was joking. This is when I was working in the model homes. I used to work in the new builds. 
And, um, you know, he came in, you know, I'm just looking, I'm just looking. I said, perfect. Well, you just give me your, your information. He goes, well, if I'm buying, I'm buying like 10 years. And I go, perfect. I'll call you every year. And now it's a running joke. And every January 2nd, guess who gets a phone call for the last eight years? He has 24 months to go. And he still said, I'm going to be retiring. And he goes, son of a bitch. He goes, you still won't stop, but I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a pest, but I'm being consistent. And it just kind of goes to show these are the things I, I could, I can psych myself out and go, well, it's a crappy time. The coronavirus is here. My whole business is, I guess I'm just gonna, I don't know what I'm going to do or keep doing the things that got me to where I needed to go. And the most important one was develop those relations, keep relationships and keep those relationships going as I'm forming new relationships. Pretty profound stuff there from Antoine. Uh, no question. That's I, I. I don't know that truer words have been spoken on this show. Um, <laughs> we're we're like I don't know 130, 140 episodes in at this point, and I'm not sure the truer words have been spoken. Yeah, All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal stuff. The the I don't even know necessarily how to categorize it, but the attitude and mindset and if you guys are looking for a rock solid example of what that takes Antoine you needn't go any further than looking at Antoine um, his schedule his regiment his uh, concern for his physical health his mental health his relationships all of these pieces put into one ball result in the culmination of what are now actually multiple successful careers from the media to real estate and it's literally mindset it's literally attitude if you can put those two pieces into place to a fraction of a degree that Antoine is you're gonna have success you don't even have to know shit about real estate you don't have to know how to write a contract you can pay somebody else to do that no but if you, you, you really don't yeah if you have the <laughs> mindset and the attitude and the care and concern for other people that that's your goal in life is to solve those problems you're gonna sell real estate you're gonna sell mortgages you're gonna sell insurance whatever it is you're selling it's gonna sell because people want to be with that they are attracted to that um you know uh, antoine's just a magnet for this shit it is it's really well, really you know it's funny and jen and jen uh, mentioned direct selling i had a successful direct selling company um a handful of years ago as well and i tell you what that set the stage for real true sales i mean if you can sell direct selling well you yep. can really sell i mean <laughs> i believed it by the way i believed in it but but my whole point is i mean you dealt with like when I say, hey, listen, 100% of people need shelter, it's like, Psh, that's a no-brainer. Not 100% of people need or want your product, especially. No, I've already done one of those in the 80s. Not good for me. Sorry. <laughs> You're weird. Um, but I learned, but I really did learn a lot. Restraining order. I know, restraining order. But I did learn a lot. And, and going back to going back to the positive attitude, I remember there was a one gentleman, still good, good friend of mine, and um, he would see me in the gym. And gosh, he goes, he saw me in the locker one day. I said about three or four months, I would always say hi and just always be pleasant. And he goes, you're so damn positive. And I go, well, thanks. I didn't know if that was an insult or I, <laughs> how he was looking at me. I'm like, you're going to punch me or something? Jeez. And he goes, no, I just love how you're always upbeat. And he goes, you know, what do you do for a living? And I told him, I said, you know, I help, uh, you know, I'm bioscience. You know, I was doing a direct selling. And he goes, gosh, I'm going to introduce you to my wife. She would do awesome to be under your leadership. And the point being to your point, to your point was the attitude, right? It's what is that saying? They don't care how much, you know, and so many salespeople, Oh, I know this and it's 0.28 grams of this. And, Oh, and I know the market and does this and a CMA and this and that. And it's like, what the hell's a CMA? What are you talking about? But when you actually sit there and listen to somebody and know that you truly care about who they are, what's going on in their life, you know, I'm not sitting there. If someone's going, a good friend of mine's going through a divorce, sitting there going, oh, that could be two homes. What are you going to do with your home, John? You know, I'm truly yeah. going to be sitting there and they, they are going to know that, hey, I'm there for you. I care about you. Somebody may have lost a loved one, right? I'm not going to be sitting there going, well, what are they going to do with their estate? No, they're going to know how much you truly 
care. And that's how, and then as soon as I, I, I was still in real estate in, in, in the model, uh, the building side while I did my direct selling. But my point being is it really built up a thick callus, but it also really made you dig deep and really empathize with the other person. And I think that is so hard for human beings. We're not designed. It's all about us. Since we were born, we're sucking on the nipple. I mean, it's about me. I'm hungry. Oh, you know, it's all about me, me, me. And the more you start thinking about you, what do you need? How can I help you? And really have that servant mindset. It's the weirdest thing though, Adam and Jen. It's the weirdest thing. My job has become easier. It's like you said, it, it's like it, it attracts you. I'll be at the gas station and be like, yeah, it's a cool looking car, dude. Yeah, we start striking a conversation. One thing led to another. Hey, just moved into town. Hey, so one thing led to another. Yeah, I'm in real estate. Hey, I haven't found anybody yet. It just happens. And I'm not forcing it to happen. It just happens because my attitude, my reticular alert system is out looking for the good in others. Going back to what we were saying, it's kind of like that full circle. You know, how can you start off with fear, anger, and sadness? Oh, look about people when they're just out and about. And they're just like, oh, oh I got a freaking mask on. Oh, don't talk to me. Oh, I'm going to die. When you come up and you smile and just say, hey, that's a great looking outfit and just walk by and their world has been taken care of and my world's been taken care of. It's my Prozac, if you will. If I wanna feel better, <laughs> just go ahead and just keep on giving it out. The, uh, co the colloquialism Antoine is uh, referring to is, uh, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Oh, perfect. And, I mean, yeah. that's, that's spot on. Yeah, and that is very, very true. And I can't think of a better uh, ending, Jen. I know we're running over, but uh, and I know that that's a pain in the ass when it comes to all the podcast algorithms and uh, oh, RSS shit. feeds and it's okay. yada, yada. It's okay. She'll, she'll roll with the punches. Um, <laughs> coming on. A Antoine, how do we get a hold of you? What's the best way to track hey, you down? Just, uh, I keep everything simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Go to Facebook, Antoine Glover. Uh, you can find me there, Antoine Glover Realtor, if you're looking for the business side of it. I also have my own podcast and radio show. Uh, it's called Wake Up and Live, K-R-D-O. You can go to Podbeam and uh, download Wake Up and Live with Antoine Glover. I bring you real estate, but more importantly, I give you a taste of what I brought you here. It's like on steroids. <gasps> so good and it's time to actually bring positivity back and get your saturday mornings it's saturday mornings 9 to 9 30 but off on the right foot and of course instagram at antoine glover what a great time slot for uh people to kind of be able to decompress and reset and uh put something new and positive into their brain first thing saturday morning that's uh really solid stuff and uh gentle uh, turn our audience on to how to find that. Well, Antoine, thank you again. I, I thank you. Wait till the next episode. Um, Let's I, do this. I know Jen's got us booked about a year out. Uh, it's only twelve November, months. November, November of twenty twenty one. November. It's only twelve months. Well, I hope. Fingers crossed. Goes by that, fast. Uh, yeah, it does go by fast. I'm hoping we'll have you back at the Mastermind event in September. Well, just ask me. Antoine. Hey, Antoine, do you want to be at the event next September? Yeah, sure. Why not? That, cool. that was easy. That was easy. Yeah, perfect. Um, and Jen, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, event is already booked. We've already picked a time slot. Tickets are already available, as crazy yes. as that sounds. But, yep. you know, we're less than 11 months out, I guess, about 10 and a half months out. So um, I would be willing to bet that you can find information about that. If you uh, can't, then you probably will by the time Jen is done. Uh, you can certainly get more episodes of How I Met Your Mortgage, get uh, our weekly video blog, The Weekly Little Tip, uh, get a copy of my book, Just the Tips. I do have a copy here, but I know the green screen will mess with it a little bit. There's my palm tree floating in the cover of my book, uh, for those of you that are able to see it. Uh, but for all of that information and content, use our text code. You can text TIPS to 63566. And it'll ping you back all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, in closing, any other final words you want the audience to uh, take away from this, Antoine? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the final words is what I live by. It's by Jim Rohn. And I, and I always like to say this. Work harder than yourself than you do on your job. You can work hard on your job. You can make a living. You can work hard on yourself. And you can make a fortune. Think about that.